In this video, we will be covering the following topic. What is Spring Boot? Why Spring Boot? Step to run Spring Boot application. How to resolve errors when Java and Spring version is not compatible. Without further ado, let's get started. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. All of the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and computer science education. Before going start with Spring Boot, we need to understand what is Spring Boot. So Spring Boot provides a good platform for Java developer to develop a standalone and production great Spring application that you can just run. You can get started with minimum configuration without the need of or any entire Spring configuration setup. So what is Spring? So Spring is a Java framework. So Spring Boot is different and Spring is a framework. When we talk about Spring Boot, that is a the version, the newer version of the Spring framework. Okay. So don't get confused what is Spring and what is Spring Boot. Both are same. It just added the newer version of. So we always say Spring Boot. Okay. Earlier when we used to work with Spring, we used to do some configuration. So so if you have seen any application or if you have seen in mobile uh, in the feature mobile, we used to have some game, right? Where you can uh, play some certain snakes or some different kind of games. So those mobile, those are are actually built with simple jar, this Java programs. So how those came into here? So that is, a, those are Java program. But the thing is, it also has some certain application, how it has to run, what logic it has, all everything is there. So that was with the Java applet and Java application where you have to execute. That also becomes the jar file here. But in this, we are understanding Spring Boot. This will help us to create a production grade application. What that means is you can create a web application. Or if you don't want to create web application, you can also create a simple software for everyday use or for any other client. Why Spring Boot we have chosen? Spring Boot is a popular framework for creating Java application. It makes it easy to create a standalone and production grade Spring application that you can just run. Spring Boot offers number of features that makes it great choice for Java developer, which includes like flexible configuration, powerful batch processing, restful APIs, automatic configuration, annotation based programming, dependency management, and embedded servlet container. Let's understand by some example. Imagine you are building an application that needs to be able to connect to a variety of databases. With Spring Boot, you can easily configure the application to connect to the database that you want without having to write any custom code. You can also configure the application to use different cache strategies, logging levels, and other stat settings as well. This makes it easy to customize the application to your specific needs. So this is about flexible configuration. Let's understand few examples with how powerful batch processing works. Let's say you need to process a large amount of data, such as customer orders or financial transaction. With Spring Boot, you can easily create such batch jobs that you can process the data in the background. These bad job can be scheduled to run at any specific time or it can be triggered by any event. This makes it easy to process large amounts of data without impacting the performance of your application. Isn't that very wonderful? Let's understand few examples through. So RESTful APIs are standard way of exposing data and functionality over the internet. Spring Boot makes it easy to create successful APIs by providing number of features such as auto-generated documentation and support for different media types. These makes it easy for other applications to consume your API. So when you create this API, other application can also use your API. So we can build and create restful APIs with Spring Boot. Spring Boot automatically configured many of the features of the Spring framework such as dependency injection very important for for an interview and transaction management this saves you time and effort and makes it easy to get your application up and running quickly 
Another feature is annotation based programming. Spring Boot uses annotation based programming which makes it easy to write code and is both readable and maintainable. So like annotation are a way of adding metadata to your code. Spring Boot uses those annotation to configure many of your features. It's very easy to understand how your application is configured and it makes it easy to make changes to your application in the future. The other two are dependency management is very important. We are we are going to elaborate in one of our topic. Dependency management, which are these are libraries that your application needs to run. Spring Boot provides number of starter dependency wherever you run an application, which are predefined bundle with libraries that you can use to get your application up and running. It also makes it easy to write dependency of for your application and helps prevent dependency conflicts. We will understand more about this in later. Spring Boot includes embedded servlet container. What it means that you don't need to deploy your application to separate web server. It also makes it easy to up your application up and running quickly and it also makes it easy to test your application locally. So that's what embedded servlet container means. So let's see how we can create an application to in order to create an application first the prerequisite thing we need to have in our system is first you need to have a java java has to be installed okay so how to install if you know or not just go to any browser okay let me share that see java search java and find where this java you need to download that this java from any download so this is oracle which has their okay just download the java any latest version but always remember whenever you're downloading it has to be version 8 or more than 8 okay you cannot go back to 7 6 1 2 java you can take 11 12 18 that all are fine but it has to be more than 8 why because Spring works on more than eight. So after installing, you you will see Java will be stored into your app, your system where it will require some installation process. Follow that. It will just install to your particular. Uh, if you are using Windows, it will store to your C where program files are there. It will store in Java. And also, I would recommend to add those uh, environment whenever it is asking just add those environment as well if not that is also fine we can always uh, add that bean environment setup later on this also so next we required a id what is id id is our integrated development environment there are many uh, app software like uh, netbeans we have we have uh, eclipse we have intel j right there are many we also have a visual code you can go and check any and any of that and pick install it is up to you wherever you are comfortable you pick but i would recommend to use eclipse most of the developer are using eclipse if you get stuck somewhere you will get uh, so many solutions in the community where you can understand what you want to find out if, if there are some error it will definitely give you some solution so download that this is also you have eclipse official website you can download this one you can take this latest build also can go back to other builders there are many as well also so this will also store and will install to a particular c drive if you are using windows these are two things which is prerequisite for spring boot other than eclipse we have another called spring suit if you heard or not this is sst so st is about spring tool where this is the official website of spring you can also go and check this link provided this looks similar like eclipse you can see this right this looks similar what it has is pre-downloaded everything whatever required there are some plugins which is required when you install eclipse so those thing is already present also you don't need to go to this spring niche ladder. this is the sec next step we are going to do it this is also present in eclipse so this spring tool so this is a id this is the fourth or fifth id which i have uh, mention so you can take we have the spring tool for visual studio also we have 
TR also. These are some plugins. It will automatically add it to that ID. You don't need to separately download. You can also check this website and download it. Next, let's see how we can start our Spring application. Go to this Spring Initializer. If you are using other than this Spring tool, other than that, you can just go to the Spring Start dot spring dot io this is a spring initializer this will help us is create the spring a project structure why we are talking about project structure first whenever you start id you have to create a project so what are the project and how the project will have the file structure however there is no one definitive spring project structure but there are some common conventions that are followed by most developers the Spring Boot project structure is designed to be flexible and scalable. It can be adapted to the needs of any application regardless of the size or complexity. So you can see this Spring initializer which will have project name. So first line talks about which build tool you are going to take. So I am not going to go with Groovy. This is one of the build tool. Kotlin is also one of the build tool. We have Maven also. So Maven I am going to click because of the easier way to maven so groovy and kotlin are kotlin is one of the first kotlin language and groovy is a dynamic language which means that it can be used to create script that are more expressive and concise than java code this can be helpful when you need to quickly and easily create a build script so maven we are going to pick it and language we are going to follow with java not with other language next you can choose the default Spring Boot as 3. Okay. Also, you can check any one. So, you can see this project metadata. What is metadata? This is your project's data of data, which tells you that how your project is going to structure. So, three things is important. We should have a group project name. This is a project name. Then, where that name is going to decide is, is actually in the artifact. Name will be inside artifact and artifact is going to be inside group. Okay. This, this is the way they follow. So the package name would be whatever you write here group. So I'm going to say group and this is artifact and this is the project name. Okay. So I can say spring app. Okay. So this is how it is going to project name would be group dot artifact. Under that our code will be there. Okay. Packaging. There are two ways to packaging means after building with Maven, what is your output? Is it your jar, Java archive or var? Var is web archive. So it has some difference. Both works the same way. But majorly we use for web application like to deploy something in uh, which consists of with JavaScript and uh, HTML part as well. We prefer to use var. In other case, Java archive is fine. So next comes to Java version. These are version. So you can pick any version, you can go to 9, but always remember two things. As you can see this in version, we already only have 8. So when you're downloading, it is recommend to use version 8 or more than 8. That, that is why Spring will work because Spring Boot is not present in lower version. But Spring Framework is actually present. So that is the difference. Spring Boot is version upgraded, which says that it has to be more than Java 8 version, but with Spring Framework, you can start with Java 1, 2, 3 also. That is older traditional way to do it. Now, this is the easiest way and very quickly we can write application. Uh, second point to remember is whatever uh, Java version you have installed in your system, that should be lower to any of this. So, if you have picked install 19 version, then 19.11 everything is fine. But if you have picked 8 version, if your Java is installed with 8, then you cannot go with 19.11 because those versions will be conflict. So I will pick 8 for now. I have 11. So that's fine. So you can see the uh, right hand side dependency. We There are no dependency. You can also add dependency to add. If you click, this will be some search box. You can find anything spring rated or so we will understand going forward how to add dependency for now nothing is required next part is you can generate or explore also so if you click explore you will see the project structure 
So in the project structure, when you download this, you will get artifact.jip. Okay. In that jib, you will see some one file dot git ignore, which talks about what are the file which need to ignore when you are pushing your code to GitHub. GitHub, you are aware or not, GitHub means is a version control, which is a cloud based where you can store your code. Next, we have some Maven. These are Maven. This is also dot. So if this dot is the dot Maven is present in anywhere in this file so you can see this dot is not it says this will be escape these folders are called maven wrapper which is a script that allows you to run maven commands without having to install maven on your computer this useful because uh, maven is a large and complex piece of software and installing can be hassle so these folders are been created by default through your spring boot project Next, we have help. This is plain uh, readme file. The help.md file is a markdown file that contains help documentation for a Spring Boot project. The help file can contain a variety of information, such as you can add instructions on how to build and run the project. You can add links to documentation for dependencies used in the project. We can also show some example of how to use the project. Add tips and tricks for working with the project. We have a POM file. POM file is the most important, which we are going to talk about in the next one we generate. Okay. And the last part is we have some structure about source. This is the source where our main code will be stored. So these are st source, which is, which this initializer we are going to create for you. Okay. We will, we will see in the next when we import that in Java. How this, what is this source, how this has been created, why this has been created, those we are going to discuss. Okay. Let's download or you can generate as well. You will see some artifact.jip. Open that, where is that reside? And what you do is unzip that and put somewhere where you can. It can be in your C file or any, any file where you want to store. Okay. For now, I'm going to extract that and I'm putting somewhere. Till then you have understood. I hope so. If not, if you have any doubt, you can ask me. Next, go to your Eclipse. Eclipse is opening. You may not see this, the first page. You will see some welcome page. Cross that and you will see how to uh, some create link will be there. Well, I have already created one project. Let it be there. Now, you will see in the top, there are some toolbar which talks about the project, uh, this uh, Eclipse software how what file you want to import what new file you want to create everything is this go to open project form file system because i have already put it somewhere in my file system let me find that file system where it can be i found it so you will see this folder and it will also say finish because it will check the project structure if that is there then it will say maven or it can be groovy any anything any build also so just say finish and your file will be present over here this whole project will be present over so you at the top you can see update maven project so what it's happening is it started downloading everything which is required at this point you must need internet to be connected so that it start downloading if your internet is not present what will happen? It will start updating, but it will not ha happen eventually. It uh, it requires some uh, added dependency, which needs to be downloaded. So this is how this Eclipse is actually downloading for you. You don't need to do manually. So just give some moment for this. Okay. Uh, as you can say, 100% has been configured. So it will start up installing. So now it downloaded is successful and it will start building so you can see the whole project structure has been changed now it used to be the uh, this whole thing was not there right this was not there the only source was there and the pom file and these were also was there were there but this whole structure has been changed because of maven maven is helping us to structure your project under this main you will see group 
where we have created our group um, an artifact under that you will see spring app application this code is already given to us so you don't need to write in the from the scratch the next folder we have application dot property it is empty to write some environment or any credential you want to put this is for property file so you can see in this test file we have another same package name but it is under different folder this is also app dot test which talks about the test file test file means whatever you write the code if you want to test you also test through the java programming so that is also there so this two thing is already present for you you don't need to write from the sketch as i said you don't need to touch this file anymore always do from here because this looks very good because of the structure it is appearing right when yeah you will see the main but it you have to expand each right so this is the best way to do it the last file uh, is pom file okay so let's discuss what is in pom the whole thing is a xml writing script so in the beginning you will see xml version what version what encoding encoding means unicode encoding in xml is a process of converting unicode characters in binary format that can be stored in xml document so this is the version which version you are you are creating this xml so that is fine for now initial version is 1.0 then we have a project tag this whole thing is under project tag you can see in pom file of spring boot there are many attributes one of the attribute called xml elements attribute the xsi schema location attribute is used to specify the location of the xml schema for the pom file the xml ns colon xsi attribute is used to declare the namespace for the xsi prefix which used to declare the default namespace for pom file if you remove this one then you might get error next we have model version this this talks about which spring model version is this is 4 okay this this first thing is the parent so this whole application is under one of the parent means it is under this spring boot starter parent it also have some version it also have some so related part is uh, depends upon you you if you want to write it can be present or not if not so what it means that whatever you are going to uh, that that download part was happening the and the above right that is actually uh, taking form from this spring so this first thing is going to download which will have this this or spring dot so you can see that in the maven dependency also if you click this at the left you will see all dependency present here so you also can see this org dot spring dot boot that is actually present under this spring boot starter you need something where you your application is has to be dependent okay every application dependent on something so this is what so next we have some group id these are the things when we we have set up if you remember the spring initializer we have set up this whole thing right these are here artifact group name right coming back to here we also have description demo this is also a setup when we are doing initializer we have some property file okay these are property file this this tells that what version or what particular version you are following so if if you want to change the version you can change it from here so now the interesting part is all dependency so from here we write the dependency so in the beginning we we will get two dependency if you are following initializer this initializer you will always get this two dependency one is the boot starter which is a subset of starter parent and the second is starter test this helps us to write testing file if you ever delete this dependency we can also delete like this if you save it what will happen if you go to this testing you will get error on this spring annotation this is actually not present what it means that this spring dot this is is he is not able to find out this where this file is how i should refer this spring boot so in order to do that must have this test or you can delete everything from here that is also fine this is the optional thing but i would not recommend to delete this let it be it just say test file coming back to our project structure the main application is this spring app 
application dot java if you ignore this first annotation we have a class java class called spring application this is also cannot be changed if you change this name of anything you will not able to run why because in spring form we have told how this spring is going to create we have name called spring app right so this same name they have taken spring app then they have put application to create your application you can write inside the main so we have main method also which have some arcs and here spring dot run so if you run this application whole then this is going to execute which is also itself spring app application so we'll go deep more on how what is this annotation means why this is written okay so for now just see what are the structure it has if you have any error on the project then you're you're not able to build your whole application okay in order to build you need to go to that particular error file and resolve where what is the error okay this has syntax mistake resolve that error because this eclipse is going to help you what is that error means then you come back and see if there is error or not sometime also you will see some error but that is logically correct but what happens eclipse is not able to do it you can ignore for now and try to build that up as well so maybe after build or cleaning build it helps resolve that error the next part of the application to build a application this application right click on the project go to your maven you can see maven this is the maven where why because we have selected maven so you can update maven update will help you to install all your dependency what are the dependency these dependency if you have ever added more dependency that dependency also will be installed okay next again right click go to run do maven click the fifth one okay this all thing will be there if you have maven spring in your application if you don't have spring so what you have to do is go to help and install new software and work with and you, you take any uh, website okay go to any website and just wait for a moment it will start downloading the source the software where you want to install so here i want to add some plugin i want to add spring so search the spring if if something is there in the spring it will show you or or you need to add maven actually not spring so if you have if you find maven something m2 right just click that and uh, whatever everything sl4j is also required sometime so whatever you required you click that and say install and say show this will help you to install your plugins these are maven plugins it has to be there if not most probably when you install this uh, eclipse it will automatically be there because if you have installed the latest version it should be there if not if you are using older one sometimes you need to install so you go to health section go install new software you will get the suggested software okay now i want to build so right click so what i have did is maven clean so maven clean if you hit this what will happen if there are some error in your application or something has to be downloaded or uh, or need to be clean so this will clean so this when you hit maven clean two thing happens it will resolve the error then you will see this target folder as well. right this is the important file all the build whatever you are going to build right jar is going to be present when you build that application this whole application so when you right click and run as say maven clean this is this whole target is going to delete means everything whatever inside this and right now it doesn't have but when you bend you will see that you will see some file under that that is going to clean clean up by maven clean okay the next is go to renas and say maven install say maven clean and install go to console console will be open for you you will see some 
some information. These don't say these are error. These are some information. These are not information. If you see some uh, failure, then you are you have some error. So understand the error. It will it will also show fail to execute code. So Maven compiler plugin something fatal um, invalid target. Okay. The error message is because the Maven plugin version is not compatible with the current Java version. To fix this, I will repeat all the steps. This will help you understanding how to do it correctly. First, let's delete this project. Then go to Spring Initializer. This time, select Spring Boot version 2.7.6. Keep the project metadata the same. Select the Java 8 version. I will explain why I am changing the version in a moment. Once you have provided all the required information, click on the generate button and download the zip file. Now extract the zip file to a location of your choice. Once the zip file has been extracted, you can import the project into your ID. In Eclipse, you can do this by going to the file, open project form file system, selecting the extracted directory. Click finish. Wait few moments for Maven to download all the dependency. Let it restructure your Maven project. As you can see, the Java version is now 1.8. I changed the Java version because Spring Boot 3.0 requires Java 17 as a minimum version. However, my computer only has 16 version installed. Now you know why I changed the Java version. Now configure your Spring Boot build. To do this, right click on your current project and select run as Maven build. In the goals field, type clean paste install and then click apply. This time you should see that your application built successfully. At the bottom of the log, you should see message build success. This means that your application has been built successfully. You can tell this by looking at the info logs, which should say test runs 1, failure 0, error 0, skip 0. This is the output of your application being built by Maven. I hope you are able to understand so far. There will be struggle, there will be like challenges you have to uh, you have to overcome, you have to understand what could be the way. Here are some additional things to keep in mind. The Maven plugin version should always be compatible with the Java version. If you are using an older version of Java, you may need to downgrade the Spring Boot version. You can always check the compatibility requirement for Spring Boot on the official website. Now, I have built, I just need to go to my application and run this and you will see the magic verify by reading this started the demo application this is the application in this second so within few seconds your whole application is running so if you write after that any uh, system dot something over here you have to run every time to get the result in this video we didn't actually add any code to the project however you can now start adding code to the project and developing your application. I hope you find this video informative and that you learned something new. And if you have any question, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. I am Ativinath and this has been Bit Science. I will see you in the next video.